Hey everybody, it's Dr. Doug and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I wanted to talk to you all today a little bit about why I became a therapist and how I envisioned this idea of therapy as a form of art and social activism and how all of that works together as maybe a new vision of what a therapist is and also to invite each of you to discover your own therapist within, which is a really important concept I'll be developing more on this channel. A little bit about my background. I was raised in the Bronx. I was born in 1959, just before the 60s hit. My parents, named Penny and Lenny, were Depression era folks, and it was a pretty conservadox Jewish background, and we were raised fairly religiously, but just FYI, sometimes when people hear Jewish, they think mostly a religion, but it's also as well a culture, a legacy, a history. In fact, you could be Jewish and you can also be an atheist. So those two uh, traditions came together in my head and in my household. I knew I was different as a little gay kid. I didn't know what term to use from an early, early age. And one way I handled that, because sports was kind of a nightmare, and I was forced to do Little League, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that period of torture Little League at some other point. But I dove into books and literature, and I just got so fascinated also with writing. Um, some, at some point, one teacher told my mom that I was a smart kid, and that kind of got everybody all excited, and I somehow got into the Ivy League. I got into Columbia, which was my ticket out of the Bronx, and also my ticket out of the closet because Columbia at that time was an old boys school. So you can imagine what that did for my sort of, you know, young and fresh and at the moment innocent imagination. I was very studious, got very involved in English literature. Not anything you can make a lot of money about, but no one really cared as long as I was in college. I decided then to go get a PhD in English at NYU. And that was all going really great, except I had a relationship at the time and it was really clear to me and the famous, he was actually a famous performance artist, his name was Tim Miller at the time that um, it was a bad thing was happening in New York, the AIDS epidemic right at the height of the art movement in New York City and in the 1980s during that whole Andy Warhol, John Basquiat period and uh, it was very scary. I'll talk to you in other videos about what happened um, in that I lost a lot of friends. I was 22, 23 years old. Can you imagine being that young and losing you know, several hundred of your closest friends? That's a whole other uh, video. I'll talk to you about that some other time. Anyway, we got to Los Angeles and a whole sort of frontier opened up in Los Angeles and I was able to become a journalist for the LA Weekly and the LA Times covering the gay beat and also the art beat. I was really lucky to be in Los Angeles. A lot of people don't know this about Los Angeles, but it's actually the birthplace of the gay liberation movement. Um, it has a wonderful sort of spiritual and intense vibration in Los Angeles. It's not just a place for um, the industry. It's also a place for new developments, the new age, spiritual developments. I met some very important people with roots to the gay liberation movement. Uh, their influence is something I will discuss in future YouTube videos, um, but just let me say right now, I was very influenced at the time by leaders in the gay liberation movement and the idea that to really be an activist meant to actually do your own inner work and go into a really depthful kind of therapy, which I did do. That kind of therapy is called analysis. I will talk about analysis and how it's different from other kinds of therapy in future uh, YouTube videos. That was a really profound experience. I, I learned a lot. It went on for, for actually several decades. Um, and I think uh, that kind of focus, that type of scholarship, that type of intensity, that type of training is why you get me now to kind of, you know, breaking from that shell and opening up to you all about, you know, just who I am as an artist, as a theorist, as a scholar, and as a psychologist in a whole new way that's only been possible really in turning 60 and having a whole new door open and just realizing that actually life can begin again as one gets older. And I want to also talk to you at some other point about the beauty of aging as long as you're working on your psychological material. I was very lucky at, during this period of time to get a teaching position at Antioch University, Los Angeles. And I was also very lucky to be hired 
to be the nation's first LGBT clinical psychology specialization director in 2006. That was a huge, really amazing experience, and I'll talk about that as well in future videos, the amazing people I met, the students that I reached, a whole mushrooming sort of community of lots and lots and lots of students, people of color. We founded also a clinic called Colors, LGBT Youth Counseling Center, and I'm just so proud of the work that we did there at Antioch developing the nation's first LGBT specialization in clinical psychology. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more in future YouTubes. What does it mean to be LGBTQ affirmative from a psychological perspective? That's a whole interesting a theory of knowledge and practice that I'm so excited to teach you a little bit more about and to inform you about and to help your lives blossom and improve as we uh, develop. I think uh, one of the other things that happened to me during this period of time is the importance of my intimate relationships. There were three major big ones and one currently right now, I'll talk to you a little bit more about, and each of them followed me through this journey of being kind of a nebbish Jewish kid, then becoming a bad boy in New York, then becoming an AIDS activist, then becoming a psychotherapist, then becoming a, a professor and becoming this sort of me, cool, interesting, artist, integrated, social activist, visionary kind of person that I want to put out in the, in the world because I want to inspire all of you to imagine that this is a period of time just because we're in the beginning of a new century and also because we need to be concerned about some of the crises that are looming such as global warming, but also political division, racism, homophobia, sexism. There's a lot more homophobia now, even more so even with the dawn of the LGBT civil rights movement. So it seems to me that my story, which is how this sort of, you know, kind of shy Jewish kid from the Bronx realized his true potential internally through inner work to try to actually contribute to become a writer, to become a therapist, and to say something about what is the importance of meaning today to inspire you all to do your own inner work. Because I really truly believe that the more inner work you do on your stuff, the more you can actually find your true potential and help the world to move into its next evolutionary stage. Because we all need each other so much to reach our finest potential, to address the challenges lying ahead which I believe will raise us all up to a next stage of evolution if we dare to take the opportunity. Thank you so much for coming to the channel. Don't forget, ask Dr.